Never mind me, I'm just trying to rule C tonight. Already blew like 200 quarts on her. Well, maybe I need a catalyst. If I can't rule Ilya, I just make my own Ilya in D&D. So, for some clarification, we are not building Cetonai right now. Neither are we building Ilya from Fate Collide Liner Prisma Ilya. We are building Ilya's will von Einspern as she appears in Fate Tonight. Ilya is a very powerful mage. She is supposed to be the strongest master in the history of the Fuyuki Grail War and very skilled in combat. At least that's what we are told. Fact is she hardly shows off any of her abilities in the visual novel other than having great control over Berserker. She never directly fights anyone, it was only in the anime adaption of Unlimited Blade Work where they added that one short fight scene of Ilya and Rin having a small duel. So, how am I supposed to make a D&D build out of this? Well, we take a look at the few things she actually does, and we do a lot of assumptions and guesswork based on the information we have. Magecraft in the Nazarverse follows some rules, and bloodlines in particular play an important part. Ilya is an Einsperren homunculus, and regarded their ultimate creation, short maybe of her ancestor Justetze von Einsperren, who became the core of the Holy Grail. General information, all homunculi created by the Einsperren family are based on Justetze, and each homunculi carries sort of a record of all the experiences their predecessors made inside of them. So in a way, it's a rather long line of reincarnation of the same person over and over again, incorporating elements from their previous incarnations. Ilya is a bit of an outlier here since she is technically a half homunculus, but she is also considered a reincarnation of Justetze, having access to her memories and so on. As such, we can at least assume that she has similar abilities to previous Einspern homunculi, like her mother Irisville. Since Ilya is the ultimate creation of the Einspern, we're just going to assume that she mastered the magecraft of the Einspern family in general. The Einspern family carries the attribute of flow and transfer of power, which makes him adept alchemist, capable of using transmutation and secretion of materials, which also allows him to create Homunculi. While they never addressed it, I'm at least assuming that giving time and resources, Ilya could create Homunculi herself if she wanted to. Furthermore, this magecraft allowed the Einspern to achieve the third magic, or Heaven's Feel, in the past. Now this magecraft allows to materialize swords. And while the secrets of achieving it has been lost over time, Ilya can tap into it and use an incomplete version of third magic when wearing the Dress of Heavens. This allows her essentially to transfer souls from one container into another. Einspern are also rather proficient in healing magic. They mostly use it for tempering with organic matter, however Irisville was rather adept with it and we're just gonna assume that Ilya can do it as well. Now, what do we actually know about Ilya? We already mentioned the Dress of Heaven and how she can use it to manipulate souls. In her fight against Rin, she summoned bird familiars similar to those of her mother and they were capable of taking the form of souls. She also possessed a pair of mystic eyes of binding. They aren't very powerful, but allow her to paralyze a person with low magic resistance. Her most defining characteristic, however, is her great potential as a master. Berserker servants are notoriously hard to control, and she can easily restrain Berserker if she needs to. She also summoned him all by herself, without any support of the Holy Grail. Usually the summoning of servants is actually done by the Grail itself, with the master only providing an anchor. Summoning a servant without the support of of a grail is far more difficult and requires vast amounts of magical energy. More importantly, she is the vessel of the grail, which also gives her the holy grail or wish granting trait. Besides the fact that it allows her to essentially become the holy grail and grant wishes after absorbing enough servants, it also manifests as the ability to cast spells without actually knowing them. Doesn't really come up at any point in the story that she could do that, but yeah. So I won't even pretend otherwise we need a build that gives her access to the wish spell. Okay. 
Okay, now that we have at least a bit of an idea what kind of abilities Ilya should have, we can actually dig into the actual character building process. So let's take a look at her stats. Frankly, the only stat we really care about is the intelligence stat, but the best way to reflect her abilities using the standard array would be to put 15 points in intelligence, 14 in charisma, you are an endearing yet somehow very intimidating child, 13 in constitution, you are not quite as frail as you appear, considering that you had to survive in a winter frost alone with Berserker and nothing more than a nightgown, it's just that absorbing servant is quite a burn onto your body. We put 12 in wisdom, 10 in dexterity, and 8 in strength, because at the end of the day, you are stuck in the body of a little child. As far as race is concerned, we make her a variant human. I know, boring, but it probably fits her the best. That being said, if you want to be more exotic, Gnome fits pretty well considering her size. I also considered making her an Azima, since she is a vessel for the Grail, but she doesn't really show any Azima-like abilities and the ability score modifier doesn't quite add up. If you want to consider Einspan homunculi elves, you can also roll with that, but in that case I would probably roll with the half elf. As a variant human, you can increase her charisma and constitution by one, because even numbers are just better. Since you can pick one proficiency of your choice, I would roll with intimidation. You are a very scary little girl in the beginning. You also gain a feat of your choice. I would suggest picking up the alchemist feat from an unearthed arcana. Einspanner alchemists, after all. This gives you proficiency with the necessary tools, boosts your intelligence by one, you can identify potions as an action, and during a short rest you can improve the potency of any healing potion. If you drink it within an hour after the end of that short rest, that healing potion heals for the maximum number of hit points that potion could restore. For her background, well, her name is Iliasville von Einsbären and she lives in a castle, so I would consider her a noble. That gives her proficiency with history and persuasion. And one gaming set. Looking at Carnival Phantasm, Ilya seems to be a hardcore gamer, so if your DM allows it, pick proficiency with video game consoles. If not, just pick chess. So, now we get to the actual interesting stuff, the classes. Well, to make things short, I think Divine Soul would probably be the most appropriate to present Ilya's status as a Grail's vessel, but we don't quite get all the spells we need from the Sorcerer's spell list, so we are going with Wizard instead. A first level Wizard gets two proficiencies. We are taking Arcana and Religion. You know, a lot of things about magic, and considering your family is all about the Holy Grail, I think it's fair to assume that you know a thing or two about Religion as well. You gain Arcane Recovery, allowing you to regain a few spell slots on short rest and you know three cantrips and two first level spells. We don't really have any cantrips that are really essential for our build, but I got a few suggestions. Take friends because I'm certain that she can use some minor charms on people, like because she can't see in the darkness, and fireballs so you have at least something with an offensive use. For your first level spells we take alarm because if there's one thing we know for sure it is that Ilya can set up a bounded field, which basically works like an alarm system and magic missile because it's basic and you certainly would know how to do that. Second level is where things get interesting. Here is where we get to pick our subclass as a wizard. Now considering what I told you earlier about the Einspern, might let you to believe that we should go with the School of Transportation or maybe Conjuration. Heck, maybe even Necromancy. But no. Long story short, none of these subclasses really benefits a build in a meaningful way, even if they might be thematically appropriate. But we do need some stuff from the Cleric spell list, like healing spells. Which is why I mentioned that the Divine Soul Sorcerer would have been rather appropriate. However, we are not playing a sorcerer, we picked a wizard. But luckily there is an unearthed arcana that got us covered. The School of Fergie is a subclass for religious magicians. Yeah, kinda have to devote yourself to a god here. We just pretend that the Holy Grail counts as a valid choice, and you have to pick one domain associated with that god. We are taking the life domain. Now we get to the point where things get interesting. When you level up as a wizard, you get to add two spells to your spellbook. The arcane initiative feature makes it so that one of these spells can be one of the domain spells a cleric of your chosen domain would get. Once you added all of the domain spells to your spellbook, you gain access to the entire cleric spell list. So we better waste no time and pick your wounds as a first domain spell. While your other spells this level should be identified. Ilya knows her magic, she can easily identify magic items if needed. Oh, and before I forget, you also gain Channel Arcana. 
It's basically just Shadow Divinity from Clerics. In fact, you gain the Shadow Divinity ability from your chosen domain. In our case, Preserve Life, which can come in quite handy if you need some quick healing. But since you are in the end a wizard, you also gain Divine Arcana. As a bonus action, you can give yourself either a plus two bonus to any attack roll you make with your next spell, or you can increase the saving throw DC of that spell by two. I think the later is generally more useful, unless maybe you are using a spell with multiple attack rolls like Scorching Ray. At level 3 we get access to level 2 spells. As we mentioned before, Ilya has Mystic Eyes of Binding, allowing her to paralyze other humans. As such, Hold Person seems to be a rather fitting spell. Next you pick up Spiritual Weapon, allowing you to summon a floating spectral weapon, which in appearance you can determine. If we were to say that it takes the form of a bird which transforms into a sword when it attacks, you could totally do that. Sadly, you can only summon one spiritual weapon at a time, but once you summon it, it stays there for a whole minute. You don't have to concentrate on the spell, and summoning and attacking with the spiritual weapon only requires a bonus action, meaning you can attack with it each turn in addition to whatever else you would be doing. And you can upcast that spell for more damage as well. Really, spiritual weapon is just pretty good. At level 4 we get an ability score improvement. However, we take the Arcanist feat instead, which is also from an Unearthed Arcana. This increases your intelligence by 1, bringing your score to an 18. You also learn Prestidigitation and Detect Magic, making sure that Ilya has all the basics of Magecraft covered, and you either gain proficiency with the Arcana skill, or if you already have it, it basically gives you expertise with it. When it comes to magic, Ilya is a genius. She was probably the only properly trained mage participating in the Fifth Holy Grail War, not counting Bazette and Atrum, who were kinda killed before the war actually started, and Caster, who is a servant. For spells, we pick Lesser Restoration as your domain spell, and one spell of your choice from the wizard list. My pick would be suggestion, but frankly we reach the point where we have to spend speculate what spells Ilya is capable of, and I will only list spells you really have to pick to make this build work. The same applies to the cantrip you get at this level. Pick whatever you want. Once you reach level 5, you get access to 3rd level spells. We take another domain spell. Riverfire seems like a decent pick. Berserker's ability to come back to life after being killed only works because you can provide him with enough mana. So we can just pretend that Ilya is just spending Riverfire on him every time he drops to 0 HP. We also take Magic Circle, which allows you to either ward off Celestial Fey, Fiends or Undead, or allows you to trap them. Keep the spell in mind. At level 6 you gain Arcane Acolyte, which gives you access to the first level benefits of your chosen domain. But you don't get any extra weapon or armor proficiencies, which is a bit disappointing because this means you cannot dress Ilya in plate armor. However, this gives Ilya access to the Disciple of Life feature, which makes her better at healing by a lot actually. You also gain Beacon of Hope, which makes sure that Berserker always recovers all of his hit points and retakes his spell magic from the wizard spell list. At level 7, you gain your first 4th level spell slot. Take Death Ward as your domain spell, giving you the ability to bread Berserker with extra life and counterspell. You are better than Rin. Prove it to her by just saying no to all of her spells. At level 8, we get another ability score improvement. We take this one to max out your intelligence. You are taking Guardian of Faith as your domain spell. A spell but you never cast because you don't need it as long berserker is around. At level 9, we get 5th level spell slots. Take Mask Your Wounds as your domain spell and Planner Binding. You might be wondering why, but don't worry, we'll get to that. At level 10, you get the Arcane Priest feature, which grants you the class feature of a 6th level cleric of your chosen domain. In this case, Blessed Healer, allowing you to heal yourself for a bit when you heal others. And don't forget to pick Raise Dead as your domain spell. Frankly, I'm not quite sure if Ilya could use that spell, but we just roll with it. And from the wizard spell list, we take Big B's hand, allowing you to summon a large, translucent hand, which you can use for all kinds of things. I know this spell might seem a bit random, but since we assume that Ilya can do more or less the same thing as her mother, well, Iris will, in Fate Clyde, pressed by Ilya, used her alchemy magic to summon a giant hand of force, and since this is the same magic Ilya is using to create her bird familiars, we're just gonna assume that Ilya could also summon Big Sand if she wanted to. Once you hit level 11, you get access to 6 level spells. However, for our domain spell, we take the first level spell blast because it's the last domain spell 
on the list. This means starting from the next level, we can pick whatever cleric spell we want. From the wizard spell list, we take create homunculus. It has been a long time coming, but we finally got it. The homunculus you create with the spell isn't quite what we have in mind though. A homunculus in fate is pretty much just a human, not a small construct like this. Frankly, can anyone explain to me why this is a 6th level spell? In essence, this is just a slightly better fight familiar. Okay, we put an asterisk next to this one. We leave it here because it would fit earlier, but if you are actually using this build, I would recommend to pick any other spell instead. Level 12 wizards get another ability score improvement and we take another feat from an unearthed arcana. Ilya prefers to let Berserker to do all the work, but Berserker is a mindless Berserker, so he needs a guidance to do so. So we take Tandem Tactician. This allows you to use the help action as a bonus action. It increases the range of it by 10 feet and if Lacerit joins the fight, you can order her around as well. And regarding your spells, pick Soul Cage from the wizard spell list. You can trap the soul of a humanoid in a cage. Ask your dungeon master if you can flavor the golden cage into a plushie of equal worth and you can reenact that and number 7 from the visual novel. And hey, this is some sort of third magic. But more importantly, we can pick Planner Ally from the Cleric spell list now. Planner Ally allows you to request aid from an otherworldly entity. This could be a god, a demon prince, a primordial, or some other sort of cosmic power. Like let's say a Holy Grail, the Throne of Heroes, or the Counterforce, depending on what you want to roll with. The entity sends a Celestial Elemental or a Fiend to aid you. If you know the name of a specific creature, you can try to summon that one. But there is no guarantee that the creature you requested will appear. I would add that you could maybe add a personal catalyst to increase the likelihood of summoning the creature you want. Now the creature that you summoned with the spell is not under your control. You have to convince them to do your bidding and usually this comes in form of some sort of deal. Maybe you can buy their services for money. Maybe you summoned a demon who wants to a couple of firstborn children. But let's assume for a moment that you could use the spell to reach out to the front of heroes and that heroic spirits are celestials. Well, at least your servant Heracles would be one. As a son of Zeus, I would classify him as an Imperium, a CR23 celestial. And now you ask them to fight on your side and as a reward they get a wish of their choice. That might actually work out. Now they don't have to accept your deal, in that case you can also use plan B. Set up a magic circle to trap whatever you are summoning. Use at least a 4th level spell slot to do so. And then you cast planner binding, forcing that creature to obey your commands. Don't do this. You can do a lot of funny business with magic circle and planner binding in conjunction with conjure elemental or summon greater demon and so on. But if the creature you summon with planner binding success at only one saving throw, you're toast. And if you are summoning a creature with a high CR, this is likely, because not only do high level celestials have good wisdom and charisma saves, quite a few of them have magic resistance or even legendary resistance. The creature that you summoned will most likely not be very pleased to be enslaved by you, and while you can upcast planner binding to a extend its duration by a lot, it costs you a jewel that is worth at least 1000 gold, which you might be able to afford if you are part of some old German mage family that got its hands on das Rheingold, but it's not exactly reliable. However, the point is that we basically found a way to do the servant summoning ritual. Magic circle serves as a ritual circle used in the summoning, planner binding is a stand-in for your command spells, and planner ally lets you summon a servant as long as the DM plays along. Anyway, level 13 wizards get access to 7th level spells. We take create Megan, a spell from the new adventure module Icewind Dell Rhyme of the Frostmane. This spell lets you create artificial humans. They do have green skin though. Ask your dungeon master if you can reflavor them into having white hair and red eyes and you finally can create all the humunculi you want. You can also pick up Simulcarum to create an illusionary duplicate of a beast or humanoid of your choice, which can do all the things the original can but only has half its hit points and cannot recover spell slots. So yeah, you can use these two spells to create some mates to serve you. At level 14, you get the feature of a level 17 cleric. I know kinda weird, in either case your healing spells now always heal for the maximum amount thanks to supreme healing. And maybe you want to take another healing spell because you can pick whatever spell you want here. At level 15, wizards get access to 8th level spells. And first of all, we take the clone spell. From a point of view, all homunculi up to you were a clone of your stature. So it's actually kinda obvious. Your other spell should be mighty fortress. This spell allows you to summon, well, a fortress. Cast it every 7 days over the course of a year and you get yourself Einspern Castle. Only cost you a diamond worth 500 gold pieces every time you cast it. Again, good thing that we got that Rheingold. 16th level wizards get another ability score improvement. You should probably use it to boost one of your neglected ability scores. 
We just improve Chiasma for now, because Ilya is precious. You also gain another two spells, and again, you can pick whatever you want here. The 17th level in Wizard is what we have been working towards to. You get access to 9th level spells, so you can pick Wish. You can use Wish to cast any level 1 to 8 spell even if you don't know it and it doesn't need to be a wizard or cleric spell either. And at the risk of never being able to use it again, you can use Wish to alter reality itself. And chances are the Dungeon Master will twist your Wish to have some unforeseen consequences. So yeah, you're the Holy Grail now. Congrats! With 18 level in Wizards you get Spell Mastery, allowing you to always have Spiritual Weapon and Magic Missile prepared and you can cast them without expanding a spell slot. 19th level Wizards get another Ability Score improvement and Ilya's cute so we just give her another Charisma boost. And finally we cap things off with 20 levels in Wizard. This gives you Signature Spell, which allows you to pick two third level spells. You always have those prepared and you can cast them once per day without expanding a spell slot. So we can take Counter Spell and Display Magic just so you can say no. Of course, these last three levels also give you a variety of different spells from both the Cleric and the Wizard spell list to choose from. Pick whatever you want, because we basically have everything covered for an Ilya build. Frankly, if you want to, you can also pick three levels in Divine Soul Sorcerer instead of taking those last three levels in Wizard. If you do that, I would recommend to pick up Subtle Spell and Quicken Spell as your meta magic options. The main issue is, as I mentioned before, that Ilya's abilities are rather ill-defined, but there is a decent baseline here. Your greatest gimmick is of course the Planner Ally and Planner Binding thing. While Planner Ally is what you would use to summon a servant, its use in an actual game of D&D is far more limited. You can, however, use Planner Binding a lot if you pick up some additional summoning spells. You can also make yourself virtually immortal, create your own servant and clone other people, but all of this requires a lot of resources you are unlikely to amass. The Einspan family might stole Siegfried's gold, but that doesn't mean that your DM will just give it to you. However, there are some rather great strengths to this build. You are a great utility caster and a good healer. Outstanding if you bother to pick up some more healing spells with the spells you had left over. And at the same time, you can still pick up some rather destructive spells too. So while the build itself is a bit gimmicky, it's actually a very great baseline to build characters that combine the best aspect of a life cleric with the utility of the wizard, making you a great supporter, but a support is only as good as the allies they support. So we need Berserker. So I guess we have to build him as a character instead of just using the Imperium stat block. But what about you? Would you build Ilya differently? Let me know in the comment below and tell me what fake character you'd like me to build. <laughs> Finally! Do you know how many quads and summoning tickets I wasted on you?